there's a, there's a judgment seat that God has. There's a judgment seat that, that God sits on. But you know, there's also a mercy seat that is, that is talked about all throughout the Bible as well. So God, you know, there's, there's two different seats that God can be sitting on. He's got a judgment seat and a mercy seat. And um, I, I, it just so... Sorry, I'm trying to find the right words. It, it's just... Um, demonstrates these various qualities of God that, that are definitely unique and individual, but all make up and comprise who God is. That he's not all just one or the other. He's not all just mercy. He's not all just judgment. God encompasses mercy and judgment. And um, we're not even going to go into all the verses about the mercy seat in the, in the Old Testament, but that was another big thing. You could look up uh, a lot about that. Look at Exodus 34, though. We're, look at verse number 5. The Bible reads, And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Now, what's interesting in this passage is, because you're going to find many people giving attributes unto God through God's word, which is still has authority, but here we see in verse 6, it says, The Lord passed before him and proclaimed. So this is God just speaking. The Lord proclaiming about himself. And this is what he says. It says, and proclaimed, and then we have that comma. This is what he's saying. The Lord, the Lord God. So God's like announcing his presence, saying, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and announcing who he is. So as he's just, just proclaiming himself, hey, the Lord's here and the Lord is merciful and gracious and long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. All great attributes, things that we ought to really, really, really love about God. But then he follows that up with the last part, and that will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, on the third and the fourth generation. And he adds in there basically that part about his judgment. Lest you forget, you know, with all of this goodness and with all of this graciousness and with all of this mercy, let, you know, don't forget, hey, I'm still going to visit the sins. I'm still going to not hold them guiltless. And you say, well, how can that even be? How has that happened? Well, I mentioned this last week, but it's worth mentioning again. God can have his mercy and grace and long suffering while still being a just God. And there's, there's, it's, it's a multifaceted uh, quality of God. And even our sin is, is multifaceted as well. So what I mean by this is, when we sin, first of all, there is an eternal punishment. There's an eternal judgment for our sin, which is hell, death, the lake of fire. Okay? That is an eternal punishment that we all deserve for our sins. Right? Jesus Christ came and made the payment in full and was punished for our sins to pay off that debt that we owe because of our sin, because we're guilty and we deserve to pay that debt, Jesus Christ came and paid that for us. That is one aspect, that is one element of, of sin and justice and judgment that is completely taken care of in God's plan for our salvation. That there's still judgment being executed. It's executed upon Jesus Christ for those that have accepted the payment that he made for us. And for those that have rejected the payment, then they pay for that themselves. However, there's also a justice and a judgment for God's children 
that is apart from the eternal consequences, that is apart from the punishment of hell, that is the temporal, that is the, 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 the current, you know, when you're reaping what you sow, when, when you're doing wrong and, and you're going to have bad come upon you, when God has to chasten you and discipline you for being disobedient and for going off and disobeying his commandments, there is also that element of, of justice and chastisement that, that God has. 